Maybe you're like me, familiar with the Cummins engine, the 5.9, and you've got a 2016 Ram 2500 with a 6.7 Cummins engine in it, and go, man, there's a lot of stuff crammed in here now. What's changed? What are all these components? Let's do a brief component overview of the sensors mounted on this engine, specifically the ones on the top side here. We've got our air inlet here, our air filter, and right inside of here, we've got a sensor reporting back to the PCM what the inlet or the atmospheric pressure is along with temperature. Right behind that, we've got a mass airflow sensor. A lot of you gas guys might be familiar with a mass airflow sensor. So we've got simply a three-wire mass airflow sensor here on the inlet side, letting us know how much air is being drawn into the engine. Over in the passenger front corner here, there's a steel plate right below the EGR tube, and below it is the engine coolant temp sensor. Moving along this EGR tube, now we've got our EGR temp sensor. The powertrain control module is closely gonna monitor this reading to determine how well the EGR valve is working. And of course, right next to this, we have our EGR valve with a position sensor built into it. If you're curious about how that works, be sure to watch one of our other videos where we go in depth with an explanation of how the EGR system works on these, as well as some common pitfalls and failures with these. Right below this, we've got a big steel plate here covering up the electronic throttle plate. Traditionally, diesels didn't have electronic throttle control or throttle plates at all for that matter. But due to emissions, now they need a little bit of a throttle closure to help draw some vacuum in, help this EGR flow a little bit better, as well as safety precautions. On the other side of the intake here, we've got another pressure sensor here. You might refer to it as a MAP sensor. And this is going to report to the PCM now the pressurized side of the intake. And this will essentially read the amount of boost that the turbo is creating as it pressurizes and forces air into the intake. As we move over by the battery here, we've got an intelligent battery sensor. Now this is used for a lot of different reasons, but primarily it's gonna monitor how effective the charging system is working. Why keep charging this battery if it's already fully charged? We can shut the alternator down and reduce the amount of current flowing into the, the battery saves the alternator, helps save the battery as well. We've got a filter built into the, the valve cover here. This is a serviceable filter, so if you're doing something like a turbo replacement or anything like that, it's important to replace the, the filter in here. And now the PCM can tell if there's no differential. Obviously, somebody's eliminated the filter. Not a good thing. The check engine light's gonna turn on. Or if there's too much pressure differential, that indicates to us that we've got a restricted filter. And that's gonna start drawing more, uh, more oil up out of the crankcase and also may mimic a faulty turbo. On the side here, we've got the EGR uh, bypass solenoid and control assembly. What this is gonna do, is a series of cables, goes over to the side here, and it's got a valve internally here. And so uh, during events like regen, we don't want those extremely high gas temperatures to go through the EGR valve. And so now it's gonna block this off. It's gonna plug off the EGR flow there and help protect the intake system here. Right behind this, finally we've got the exhaust pressure sensor. PCM needs to understand what the back pressure is for a variety of reasons. Turbo control as well as uh, emissions control there as well. It, also part of fueling. Hopefully now you get a little better understanding of what all these sensors are underneath the hood of this 2016 Ram 2500 with a 6.7 Cummins engine.